preseason football is never quite what we want, but it is still football, and it should provide some valuable opportunity to learn more about who's going to make this Bears 53-man roster. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter, at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. On the show today, We preview the Chicago Bears' first preseason game against the Tennessee Titans, specifically getting into what to watch for and kind of how to watch the preseason game in terms of like functionally what to look for, but also what not to put too much stock in and what not to really look out for because it is real football and it's meaningful in terms of player evaluation, but it's not meaningful in every way. It's not a real game. It's not going to be perfectly replicable to what we'll see in the regular season. So we'll start with the starters and namely Justin Fields, who Matt Eberflus says is going to play at least some in this game. We'll also look at some of the other key starting competitions and and other rotations on this team for like real playing time in the regular season. And we'll wrap up with the rookies, particularly the rookies in the trenches that can be hard to get a sense of how they're doing at practice because It's practice, but in a real game, in real pads against a real opponent, we'll get a much better sense of what's going on with Darnell Wright, Jervon Dexter, and Zach Pickens in particular. But I want to start with Justin Fields because Matt Eberflus did not have to play Justin Fields in this first preseason game or any preseason game. Many teams do not play their quarter, their starting quarterbacks in preseason games, in large part just due to the injury risk. You know, there isn't any meaningful result or outcome from the game in terms of wins and losses. And so how much value do you get from playing your quarterback? Well, in terms of player development, it can be important to get them out on the field. And certainly uh, that would seem to be the rationale behind Eberflus and the Bears uh, staff as a whole, right? It's not his decision solely, but them them deciding to play him. Even Eberflus said, like, we consulted with Getze. We consulted with QB coach Andrew Janoko, kind of talked it over as a whole staff. And Field is going to play. I don't think he's going to play much. Eberflus wouldn't say specifically you know, if he's going to have a specific snap limit or a snap range. I mean, he said he will have a range, but they're not going to tell us what the range is going to be. And he said that snap range is also going to vary by player and by starter and also kind of by drive. So the idea here is that, you know, they're going to set a certain number, like it could be seven to 12 snaps or 12 to 15 snaps or something along those lines. And then depending on how the drive is going, right, maybe, you know, you're getting, you're, you're like halfway through a drive and you hit that seven snap number. And it's like, well, we're not just going to take this guy out halfway through the drive. We're going to, we're really going to kind of expand beyond that and, you know, finish out this drive, even if it's kind of pushing up on the higher end of the range there. And so it's hard to know how much we're going to see Justin Fields, but I would guess it's at most two drives, maybe, maybe only one and different starters that I think are going to play different amounts. You know, some of the younger starters, particularly the rookies that we'll talk about in a little bit, I I would bet are going to play more than some of the other starters. Like, you know, Justin Fields, probably not going to play a ton, but maybe a starter like Khalil Herbert or Dante Foreman or, or, you know, maybe a younger wide receiver in there or certainly some younger players on defense play a few extra drives than some of the other starters that will be taken out sooner. Plus, a number of starters are going to be missing just due to injury. A lot of different guys. We did an injury update podcast just a couple of days ago, and not much has changed since then in terms of guys setting out. So we'll probably have half a Bears defense and like two thirds of a Bears starting offense, but maybe half of a Bears offensive line. You know, so again, you don't want to leave Justin Fields out there too long, but I do want to see 
how Justin looks, right? And I think it's important that like we shouldn't get caught up in, okay, does the offense drive down and score? Not that important in a pre, in the preseason, right? Because again, it's not going to be the full starting offense. They are not game planning for the Tennessee Titans. You know, they're going to run some specific plays that they want to see their guys execute kind of regardless of what the defense is doing. And so for me and Fields, like when I'm watching Justin Fields, I'm less worried about, okay, does the offense look like a well-oiled machine? And more, more looking at, okay, how quickly is Fields going through his reads? How quickly is Fields delivering the football? Is his release, has his release sped up? What is his pocket presence like? And how, how is he feeling that pressure? You know, how quickly, how quick is he to scramble? And what kind of mechanics are we seeing in terms of footwork and delivery in the pocket on short, quick three-step drop types of throws that maybe he struggled with a little bit more last season? Like really isolating fields sort of separate from what everyone else around him does because he's not going to have a starting offensive line in front of him. He might not have his starting receivers out there. I mean, Claypool's been in and out of practice now the last couple of days. He might not play. We'll see if DJ Moore gets much run at all. Like he's going to be throwing the backups. He'll have some backups in front of him on the offensive line. This is not the time to look and see if they're cohesive and playing well and f- flowing like a top five offense in the NFL. This is the time to look at them individually and say, okay, how well did that wide receiver run that route? Was that a nice route by him? Whether the ball was thrown to him or not, whether the ball was accurate or not, did he create separation? Like that's something you can look at. Not whether like the whole operation came together perfectly, but did each individual piece of the operation handle their responsibility? You know, if the offensive line, you know, if the team blitzes and nobody picks up that guy, like you might expect communication issues and things like that at this stage of the process. And that's not something to be super concerned of like, oh, the Bears aren't ready for the regular season because, okay, like, the backup wide receiver was not on the same page with the QB or the backup right guard was not on the same page with the rookie right tackle. You know, like that's got that kind of stuff less concerned about, especially in the first preseason game, more specifically individually, how are they on their technique, their execution, fulfilling the responsibility individually that they were asked to do. And you know, how, what kind of progress are we seeing from fields and some of those other guys in that area? I'm also really curious to see, how the playing time split is for guys that either are starters in a competition or aren't specifically starters, but guys that are going to be playing significant snaps this season in a rotation. In particular, there's a few positions like running back, wide receiver, cornerback, and linebacker that I really want to see how the Bears sparse out that playing time. And we'll kind of go through what to watch for at those spots next on Locked on Bears. The Locked On Bears podcast is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Everyone is familiar with LinkedIn at this point. I'm on LinkedIn. You're probably on LinkedIn as well. And so you get yourself a very wide, wide pool of qualified candidates. But the great thing is LinkedIn has some simple tools like screening questions that make it really easy to focus on just the candidates with the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one versus their leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs gives you the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Well, I think Justin Fields and many of the starters are not going to play a ton. There's a few of those like starting spots that really truly do still feel up for grabs. Either it's wide open or... There's enough of a competition still open where it can be anybody's game, especially if some guys start to play a lot better over time than others. And how the Bears choose to split those reps in these in this preseason game and the subsequent preseason games will tell us a lot more than the unofficial depth chart that the team put out. Like first and foremost, those unofficial depth charts that the team put out are not usually something to put a ton of stock into. The coaches kind of throw it together. The PR people often kind of throw it together and the coaches give it a quick once over and say, all right, close enough, <laughs> you know, good, good enough. Sometimes they want to send a message like putting Travis Gibson fourth or Kendall Vildor fourth, but otherwise sometimes it's just kind of throwing guys in spots and not really getting too worried about it. How we see them used in the preseason though will tell us a lot. You know, if you're a guy who's 
a starter and then you don't play that much, pretty pretty clear then that you're you're feeling safe. Especially if you're in a starting competition and you don't play that much, if they want to get a longer look at the other guy, it usually means they kind of know what you are and are usually pretty satisfied with it and don't need you to prove a ton more to them. But it's the other guy who they want to see a lot more from. Same goes with pretty much you know anyone in competitions there. Special teams can be very similar. Like if if you're a player who's fighting for a 53-man roster spot, if you're good at special teams already, you might not play that much special teams in the preseason and you'll be fine. If you're really bad at special teams, you might not play either and you're screwed. But really, it's the guys that play a lot of special teams that they're really trying to evaluate like how good this person is and whether or not they're going to make this 53-man roster. But like a running back, for example, I imagine like, Khalil Herbert's going to get you know the first carries and be the quote-unquote starter. But then do they rotate that by drive? Is how equal are the snap counts there? Does one of them play deeper into the second and third quarters, you know, into the second half? And, you know, like does Khalil Herbert do the first two drives and he's out, or do they alternate drives for the whole first half and then is the second half all Roshan Johnson? Then does Roshan Johnson like get in that early rotation, or is it very clearly just Herbert and Foreman back and forth, and then Johnson once Foreman and Herbert are done? Right, that'll give us some insight too into like how potentially open that is and perhaps how big of a role we should expect Roshan Johnson to have right away. Like certainly I think his role is going to grow over time. And if he doesn't play in the sec- until the second half of the preseason, that's no omen or indictment on what his ability will be. It just is the Bears narrowing it down a little bit more to Herbert versus Foreman as the true starters and Johnson not really being in the quote unquote starting competition at that spot. So I'm, I'm curious to see how they ultimately split those up and how equal they are, or if there's a a leaning in one direction or another. I am curious to see how wide receiver shakes out. Not that it's the starting jobs up for grabs, but you know, everybody else, we know more Claypool Mooney at the top. Those are your big three wide receivers. They'll play the most. Claypool's probably not going to play in this game. We'll see injury wise and we'll see if Moore and Mooney play either. They both, I mean, Moore is a veteran and Mooney, was injured. So any, but anyway, like more importantly, like how much does the rookie Tyler Scott play? He's had a lot of dropped passes and dropped punts in training camp practices that certainly can be holding him back. Equinemius St. Brown, a guy who is well regarded for his blocking, but you know, it's, he does not guarantee any kind of spot on the 53 man roster. A uh, Dante Pettis is back at practice in pads. He was on the non-football injury list to start training camp and is definitely working from way behind there. But you, you, the offensive wide receiver depth chart goes pretty deep right now. You got Simba Webster. You got Valus Jones, of course. Uh, you know, how big of an offensive role does he start to play in there? They signed Isaiah Ford at the start of training camp. He's been on NFL rosters before. And, and Aaron Cruikshank, the undrafted free agent, has been one of the guys who has drawn some praise for what he's been able to do at training camp. So like those guys are all fighting for you know, maybe three roster spots and Bayless Jones and Tyler Scott probably have two of them or and maybe Economist St. Brown makes that six. And then that's, that's your six. I mean, th- those guys and what kind of playing time they get in this game, I think will tell us a lot about how the bears feel and, and what they're trying to evaluate in that group. There's also the starting cornerback battle right now, Tyreek Stevenson versus Terrell Smith, the two rookies. Smith has been injured, so he might not play in this preseason game. And then it would be presumably all Tyreek Stevenson getting the go as the starter, and maybe that won't end up answering that question for us a ton. But, you know, Kendall Vildor was fourth on the unofficial depth chart. How early does he get into the game? Same with, um, uh, why, can't, uh, why can't I think of Tra- Travis Gibson, excuse me. Same with Travis Gibson, fourth on the, on the unofficial depth chart. Does that mean he's only going to play with the fourth stringers in the fourth quarter? No, he's probably going to play in the second quarter. I think he'll make, rotate in with the starters. But like, still, how early they play with those guys and how much playing time those guys get compared to some of the other younger player on the roster will, will certainly go a long way there. And then there's quietly a big battle at linebacker. Because Jack Sanborn has been out with injury for a lot of training camp, Noah Sewell has been working with the starters and playing particularly well, and that one could go anybody's game. Sanborn was really kind of the, the, the hero, the fan favorite of last season. Sewell comes in as a rookie fifth-round pick from Oregon. Both guys have a, a lot of good instincts and, and certainly physicality at linebacker. Maybe both guys have some speed limitations at times, but you know, curious to see you know, if Sanborn is feeling healthy enough and plays in this game or if it's all Sewell, and certainly how well Sewell does will go a long way. And he's just one of the rookies that I'm really curious to see you know, in this kind of an environment with the pads on against a real opponent where you know practice just isn't necessarily always the greatest measurement here. Like you can certainly pick some stuff up, but preseason game where like when you actually don't like the opponent, it's not just your teammate and there's actually, you can actually hit 
the opposing quarterback or vice versa. Your quarterback can actually be hit. It's just like a little bit more of a stakes attached to it and a little bit more juice. And especially for rookies, it's their first NFL game. It's not a real game, but it's their first live game situation in an NFL stadium against an NFL opponent that you haven't been practicing up against each and every day at training camp. And so it's going to be a big opportunity for those guys to get their feet wet, feel the speed a little bit differently, and and also then show us the kind of progress they've made from college to early, not early on in their Bears career and give us a better sense then of maybe what we can expect from them individually throughout their upcoming rookie season. In particular, I want to check in on the guys in the trenches, Darnell Wright, Jervon Dexter, and Zach Pickens next on Locked on Bears. We're going to break down the film from this Chicago Bears preseason game in some exclusive breakdown videos for the Locked On Bears subtext group. So if you want some in-depth analysis with the visuals, we'll draw on it, we'll tell us right, we'll break down the plays, the play calls, and what we're seeing from all of these key members of the Bears, you got to join the Locked On Bears subtext group. It's joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Bears. It is $4.99 a month. It's an extra subscription. And what it is, it's an SMS text messaging platform. So you can text me directly. It goes right to me to my phone and you can ask me questions. I can respond directly to you. You can share your thoughts on the team, on what's going on, what we're seeing in the preseason game. And it gives you access to our subtext group. I've got basically like a Google Drive that I can upload all 22 videos to. I've got the full Bears games, all 22 on there from last season. We've got uh, advanced charting and data from last year of Justin Fields throwing against different coverages, throwing different routes, receivers running different routes, Bears players in coverage, different personnel offensively, and so much more, all exclusively for Locked On Bears subtext members. The URL is joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Bears. We have a unique Ngakwe breakdown, a Khalil Herbert breakdown, and coming up, Bears preseason week one breakdown will be in there as well. Joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Bears. May end up starting with the rookies there. We'll see exactly what we see in the preseason game before I can tell you what we're going to break down exactly. But in particular, I want to see Darnell Wright from a technique standpoint. We knew coming out of Tennessee that he's a little bit on the raw-er side. I don't think that's a word, but more raw side, raw-er, where technique-wise he had some bad habits in college in terms of like being off balance, bending at the waist and, and lunging a little bit that can, that like he was able to recover from really well in college because he is so athletic. Like he's such a big, fast, strong freak. But in the NFL, everyone he's going against are big, fast, strong freaks. And so like, you can't just rely on your athleticism as much to make up for your technical deficiencies. You have to be athletic and technically sound in order to consistently produce at the NFL. And so his technical progress will be critical to how well he's going to perform this season. And I'm not expecting him to come into preseason week one, a perfect fixed offensive tackle that's, you know, perfection locked down, never going to make a mistake in technique, but just kind of more generally, how does it compare to what we saw from him in his college tape? Are we seeing progress there? He's also a guy who at training camp practices has got, had a number of false starts as the Bears have been trying to work different cadences, mix different things in, really like throwing a lot at them intentionally. So like, I'm not concerned about the false starts just yet. But let's see how that translates in the game. And Luke Getze said Wright hasn't been making the same mistake twice, just been making the same, just making the first mistake fairly often. So well, I think it's I think it's it's gonna be important to see where his development is in that regard and then how consistent we can expect him to be come week one in the regular season when the Bears will be relying on him. Same thing goes for the defensive line and, and Javon Dexter, the second round pick from Florida. Also, I think even more of a project than, than Darnell Wright, comparatively, because the Bears have had to kind of rebuild his stance and his get off, you know, his release from the stance, essentially, from the ground up. At Florida, he was not asked to penetrate upfield and get between the linemen as quickly. And so the Bears have had to kind of teach him to do that and teach him where to put his feet in his hands and really kind of not restart, but retrain, you know, build kind of break some old habits and build some new ones in that regard to get him to be more explosive because he's an explosive athlete. He's got size, strength, speed, and it's really tested well, but like you got to teach him how to use that better. And there's been fairly rave reviews of him at training camp, but I I, I feel like there's a, th we get, there's a thing we kind of have a, a, I don't want to say a media bias. It's an outsider bias that guys who are big, fast, and strong tend to get 
rave reviews from people watching practice. Chase Claypool is the same way. Javon Dexter is the same way. Like we see that they're big, strong, and fast. And that's kind of the easiest thing to, to latch onto and to see and, and to have an observation about that. And it's a lot harder when you're watching practice to pick up on his technique, right? To pick up on how, how well he's using his hands, how quickly he's getting off the line of scrimmage. And we don't often hear that kind of stuff. And so while we should be encouraged by all the positive things we've heard about Dexter and Wright and, and others, that's kind of uh, that's not surprising. It's not it should be expected to, to me that like the guy who's humongous and really big and fast, like he gets a lot of praise for that. But that's we already knew that about him. And we need to see the other aspects. I think the game will be a time we can slow it down, look at the technique a little bit closer and see then what kind of progress he is, what how raw it looks against a new opponent and how much then we can expect for him to produce in the regular season. Same goes for Zach Pickens who I think had a little bit more, uh, should have a little bit of an easier transition to the NFL. But you know, as a third round pick, he's not as freakishly talented, right? As Jervon Dexter, but might be a little bit more technically sound at this point. Like I, the, the skill set comparison is not, it's not one-to-one in this way, but the, the, the energy it gives me is, was that 2014 when the bears drafted Ego Ferguson in the second round from LSU and Will Sutton in the fourth round from Arizona state and Sutton came in and was a little bit more pro ready and had some early production as a three technique, quick pass rusher who got into the backfield a few times. I don't think we're going to see quite that same dynamic, but it has that same kind of energy where I think Pickens may have a few more flashes as a rookie, whereas Dexter is going to take a little bit more time. Although the bears have been playing Pickens a little more at nose tackle and Dexter a little more at three technique. They've both been playing both spots, but despite Pickens being smaller, they've had him start a little bit more at the nose tackle spot to kind of adjust to the pro game there and not be relied on so much in the premier pass rushing position of the three technique. And, and nose tackle forces you to be quicker with your hands because you're like much more closer right over the center. And so th- I think they see nose tackle as a better learning opportunity for Pickens, better for him to grow there. And then you can kick back out to three technique and kind of have I, I think it's an easier transition or, or more like a more productive transition for him to like force him to work on some things at nose tackle that will then make him a better three technique because some of the other things he can do well may already translate better to three techniques. So both guys are working at both. And I do want to see how the Bears choose to work those two guys and rotate them between those two positions and how much they play. Because let's not forget the seventh round defensive tackle, Zach Bell, um, Ryan Poles, absolutely, or excuse me, Travis Bell. Ryan Poles raved about Travis Bell as a seventh round pick coming out of what Ken, is that Kennesaw State? It's like super super small school, first ever player drafted out of Kennesaw State, I think. Uh, but Ryan Poles says this is my guy. Like I'm absolutely think this guy is going to be great. I want to see what he does, how much he gets to play. You know, Jalen Holmes is another guy who's flashed in this defensive line. They signed uh, Travion Roy or uh, Bravion Roy, excuse me, uh, earlier this training camp. What can he do in this mix? And also one sleeper to throw out there, not a rookie, but. Um, Terrell Lewis, the edge rusher, has gotten rave reviews. Uh, DeAnthony Jones, the undrafted rookie free agent, another guy who has impressed at Bears training camp. And, uh, and Dominique Robinson as well has earned higher playing time. So like a lot of these defensive linemen, I want to see how well they do, how well they rotate, and especially then the rookies in the trenches. They can't just be big, fast, and strong in these in, in game situations. Like you got to be able to win against opponents that, that don't know you. And I think the Titans, well, I don't think the Titans have a particularly strong offensive line at this point, which should be a good matchup then for the Bears and these defensive linemen. I still want to see kind of individually, technique-wise, how well they're able to perform in this preseason game. Like I said, we'll break down all the preseason action, not only in video form, break down the film on the Lockdown Bears subtext group, but for always for free in the podcast on Monday after the preseason game. So make sure then you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Really appreciate everyone who makes Locked On Bears your first listen. We love our everydayers that tune in each and every day. And of course, you have to tune back in not only for your Bears analysis, but of course, another opportunity to bear down.